Perhaps when we find ourselves wanting everything, it is because we're dangerously close to wanting nothing at all. Sylvia Plath. In the world of academia, students are put under constant pressure to perform, and not only to show up, but to succeed, to be the very best. They're told it's a cutthroat world out there, so suck it up and choke it down. Professors are here to prepare us for the harsh reality that is to come. Oftentimes, we are only given a few chances to prove ourselves during a semester. With those classes that only give a midterm and a final, those classes that strive for a C average, and those 30-page research papers we all know and love. It's the knowledge you gain that counts, not the grade. And, though all I agree, and although I agree, the first way an employer or in a graduate school is going to assess the knowledge I gained here are by my grades. With all these expectations, it's no wonder people crack under the pressure. But could you imagine how much harder this all becomes to a person dealing with depression simultaneously? The hardest part of depression for me hasn't been the times of indescribable sadness or inconsolable rage, but in the moments where I feel nothing at all. Apathy consumes me. It swallows me whole. An emptiness washes over me, and I feel irrevocably alone. I'm drowning, and the worst part is, I don't care. A big symptom of depression is the loss of interest in life, which leads me to the question, if the greatest symptom of my disease is to die, then how am I to live? No, my illness is not tangible. I do not have a rare cancer, an infectious disease, or a broken bone. But in a very literal sense, my illness can be terminal. A terminal illness is a disease that is not easily cured or adequately able to be adequately treated and is often expected to result in the death of a patient. So with an astonishing lack of resources, scarce education and understanding, and inadequate treatment, has this become my fate? Will I lose one of my best friends to this illness? The sad reality is, is that every 30 seconds, someone ends their life to escape the emptiness. How many people have to die before we take this seriously? What I need you to understand is that those struggling with depression are not seeking attention. They are not simply misunderstood. They are not crazy or insane, and they are not weak. They are sick, and I am sick, and I need your help. Because in moments of clarity, I cling to life. I choose life. But these moments become few and far between when the pressures of life weigh us down. So I ask, what can we as a university and as a community do to lessen the burden of others? Break the silence. Start the conversation. Cut the ties of stigma and shame that are so deeply bound to mental health issues. We think that because we're in a place of higher education, people have also been educated on the matters of mental health. And I know this to not be true from personal experience. It's not because they don't care. It's because they have either been simply misinformed or not informed at all. I propose that we put a program that teaches people the visible signs of those struggling and how to appropriately accommodate them. Until recently, I had no idea that the student, or that the Office of Disability Services provides accommodations not only for those with learning disabilities, but with other mental health concerns as well. 
As the Rehabilitation Act states, a person with a disability is one that has an impairment, a physical or mental illness that can affect the way they walk, see, speak, hear, but also how they learn, how they read, how they comprehend, and how they can sleep at night. If we were to have professors required to tell students what the office does and the services they provide, I believe many more students could reach out for help. We can also build upon the services that the office already provides and try to create a more streamlined approach. I know this seems like small steps in bettering mental health services at the university level, but I truly believe that they can prove to be groundbreaking. And on a more personal note, you may never understand why someone is depressed. You may never feel the way that they feel. But what you can do is accept them for who they are and be patient for them to open up and a support system no matter what. And for those of you struggling, shout, scream, cry out for help, because you are not alone. You are loved and you are worthwhile. Take advantage of the resources we have and advocate for more, because until the affected rise up, others will remain inactive. I implore you today to fight. I take a stand. I stand for my mom. I stand for my friends. I stand for you, and I stand for myself. I will not let depression become an illness that has no cure. Thank you.